in the last three months? How many's had some really rough days? How many might be still in that rough day right now? Amen. It's all right. We're all there. But you know what? The Bible says that in everything, give thanks. Does that mean that we give thanks for everything? No, we don't give thanks for Corona. We don't give thanks for the horrible things that are going on in our world. We don't give thanks that the nation is in an uproar this morning and only God knows the answer. Amen. 
We don't give thanks for that, but we give thanks in the middle of the storm. Amen. We give praise in the middle of our trials, in the middle of death, in the middle of whatever is going on. And this morning, we're going to raise a hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. We're going to raise a hallelujah because of who he is. Amen. Sing it out with us. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Yes, Lord. I'll raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Louder than the
lift one to him this morning. Lift a hallelujah. In the midst of trouble and trials and difficulty, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Turn around and just point at your neighbor and say hello this morning. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to continually pray for our police officers all the way around our nation. Amen. Um, just because, I keep saying this, just because we got a few that, that are uh, not doing things that are right don't mean that all of our police officers are wrong. Amen. <laughs> Let's give the Stanton Police Department, Harrisonburg, Waynesboro, all of our police and the service department, our National Guards. Yeah, let's give them all a hand. Amen. We need them. Amen. Thank God for them. Look here, I just noticed Walker's here this morning. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. Serving in our country. Thank you, Walker, for serving our country. So good to see you. You look sharp sitting back there. Hallelujah. I don't know if I can do this in 15 minutes. <laughs> Tina put a letter out. We will be out in 45 minutes. Oh. You can tell I didn't write that thing, okay? <laughs> Amen. All right, I might be a few minutes over. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to shoot for it. I'm going to shoot for it. I want to talk just for a few minutes this morning about unshakable faith. Having unshakable faith in a time of trouble disaster, hurting, and pain, and everything that's going on in our world today, unshakable faith. Listen, dads, moms, uh, government workers, police officers, whatever your occupation is, God's got this whole world in His hand. God's not up there wringing his hands. God's not up there frightened. God's not up there with trying to put a strategy together to see how the church might come together to worship him a little bit more. God's not up there worried how all of this is going to turn out. My God has the whole world in his hands. And if you're a born-again Christian, and you're walking with God, the Bible says that the righteous will be covered. I, I like the, the psalm in Psalms 112, 6 through 8. And it reads like this. Surely the righteous. Let's say that together. Surely the righteous will, listen to the next couple words, never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Why will they not be shaken or be remembered forever? Because they are the righteousness of God. They will have no fear of bad news. Oh, hallelujah. It's a good place to say amen. Amen. They will, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are, listen, their hearts. The Bible says, in the last days, men's hearts 
will fail them, Sister Betty. But he said the righteous, their hearts are, listen to this, steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are, they're secure, and they will have no fear. Church, we're living in trouble times. We're living in perilous times. I believe that the coming of the Lord is very near. We don't know the day or the hour of His return. But remember this. If it is a while off and none of us know, we don't know when it's our turn to leave this earth. We don't know when God is going to call us home. Realizing this week, an 80-some-year-old gentleman went home to be with the Lord, while at the same time, a 20-some-year-old, 25-year-old went out into eternity. We don't know. Life is, listen, life is very fragile. Life is very fragile. That's why James put it this way in chapter 4 and 1 through 3. James says, now listen. What he meant was, take notice. What he meant was, perk up your ears. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we'll go to this or that city. We'll spend a year there. We'll carry on business and we'll make a lot of money. Why, you don't even know what will even happen tomorrow, James says, talking like that. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while, and then then you vanish. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we'll live and we'll do this or that. James is trying to communicate that life is very fragile. That we're here today and we're gone tomorrow. That life can change within a moment. But God wants His people to walk by faith, not fear, stopping to realize the times that are upon us. One writer put it this way about the church, a frightened and fearful world needs a fearless church. It's time for the church in the hour, in the day that we're living in, to stand in faith like we've never stood in faith before. To stand strong in the midst of adversity. To stand strong in the midst of trouble. To stand strong in the midst of what's going on in our, in our world today. Because I believe that we are being shaken. I believe the church world is being shaken. I believe our individual life is being shaken. God said in Hebrews, what can be shaken is going to be shaken. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 26 through 29 puts it like this. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, His voice shook the earth. But now He speaks another promise. Once again, I'll shake not only the earth, but He said, I'm going to shake the heavens. This means that all creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we're receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping Him with a holy fear and awe. Verse 29 says, God, listen to this, is a consuming fire. He said, God is a consuming fire. Is God love? Yes. God loves us. God is compassionate about us. God will do anything to go to the very depths. I've always said that God will have someone standing all the way at the gates of hell trying to keep you from going out into eternity lost. Yes, He's love. But the Bible is very clear. He's a consuming fire. God is going to use this time 
to purify his church. Well, let me say this. God is using this time to purify his church. How many of you feel like that God is doing an inner work in your life like never before at this time? How, how many of you are checking up on yourself, seeing if your life is right before the Lord? How, how, many, of look, how many of you are looking at your life? I know I am looking at my life. God, is it any sin in my life? Come, come on, let's be honest with God. How many of you have checked yourself since all this stuff's been going on? Now, let me be checking everybody else. Well, this one's not in church, and that one hadn't been in church for years, and this is going on, and that one's going on. No, no, no. God is working with them if you'll just love them and care on them. And, well, they've been out of church for this long. Just love on them and let God work on them. God is a consuming fire to you. God is working on you. God is trying to change you. God is trying to get you ready for the rapture of the church. Because God is a consuming fire. And how many do you think, for to God, that He loves us so much? That he gives us, he's giving us chance after chance after chance after chance. I'm not glad because of the coronavirus, but I am glad that God is shaking us. Because, church, really, we needed to be shaken. We had too many idols before us as Christians. As Christians. I'm going to just give you a few points and I'm going to let you go. Number one, if you're taking notes, during the shaking, what's in you is going to be revealed. During the shaking, what is in you is going to be revealed. During the shaking, what's in you is going to come out. If the Word of God is in you during this time, it's going to come out. If praise and worship and thanksgiving is in you, it's going to come out. If grumbling and complaining is in you, it's going to what? It's going to come out. If you're speaking words of encouragement and words of uplifting words on a regular basis in your life, when things like this happen, what's in you is going to come out. I meant to bring a, uh, meant to bring a Coke can with me. And I was going to shake it up. Since I seen Brother Jim on the front bench, I would open it up. What happens when you shake a can and you open It's going to what? It's going to come out. Stress and anxiety and frustration and fear and confusion building up on the inside of a lot of people. They just like the Coke can. When things like this happen, they do what? What's in you when you're shaking is going to come out. How many of you have had some things in you that's been coming out that you weren't too pleased with? Some things in your life that God is checking and working on. It's coming out of you. Whatever is in you is going to come out when you're shaking. You fill in the blank what God has been dealing with you on. Because he's shaking his church. How many of you feel like that you are more ready for the rapture of the church now than you've ever been? How many of you feel like that you've prayed a little bit more? You've sought God a little bit more? You've checked your heart a little bit more? Second thing, if we're going to... During the shaking, your foundation is going to be tested. What's my job going to look like? Testing. What's my new business look like? Testing. My career, testing. Bank account. Oh, what's my bank account look like? What's that idol of some people, even Christians, their money, it has been shaken. How many of you like sports? Everything but the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. I, lo I love sports. But sports has become a, become an idol 
to a lot of people. The music, the music industry shut down. God said, I'm shaking you. I'm shaking the nation. We thought we had a lot of the racism. Getting off of my notes a little bit. We thought we were doing a lot better at that. But when God starts to shake us, we see where we're at. During the shaking, your foundation is going to be shaking. Your money's foundation is being shaken. Your sports, your, your family. During the shaking, your foundation is going to be tested. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 puts it like this. For no one can lay a foundation other than the already laid one, which is Christ. Listen, which is Christ Jesus. Listen, we can't have any... Listen to this preacher. We cannot have any thing else that we are uh, uh, we are seated on in our life our foundation has to be Christ and Christ alone listen it cannot be your foundation listen to this cannot be money and Christ your foundation cannot be your hobby, I love my hobby, and Christ, your foundation cannot be your family and Christ, your foundation cannot be anything, listen, anything but Christ, and when I am shaken, my foundation better be on the solid rock Christ Jesus, and when all hell is breaking loose, and when Lord, I ain't preached in a while. When all the enemy is coming against you, and it seems like all hell is coming against your life, and it seems like everything has failed, your money, everything is gone. If I am seated with Christ, oh Lord, if I am seated with Christ, and his, He is my foundation, I will not be shaken. Will you give me two more minutes? I've almost made it. My last point. During the shaking, who will you walk hand in hand with? Who will you walk hand in hand with? It is Jesus. But the Bible is very clear that we need to find someone that is hurting and walk hand in hand with them. Listen, brothers and sisters, I need you. I need you. I need your prayers. My family needs your prayers. Just get, up, get with us sometimes when we're not in church, and you'll see you, we need your prayers. For a few of you think we're the perfect family, you just have not been around us. Because I can guarantee you we're not the perfect family. Uh, Josh said, where's Josh? He said something about, my gracious, he said, talking about a dysfunctional family. He said, we really love each other, but we are dysfunctional. Somebody needs you. Come on. Let me quiet down a little bit. Somebody needs you. They, they need that phone call. They, they, they need that text. They need that prayer. You don't know what's going on in a lot of people's lives. Everybody that rode through here yesterday, the Lord really showed me, Kevin, you really don't know what's going on in a lot of people's lives. I've seen this young lady, as Tina mentioned, and might have been a boyfriend or her husband, I don't know. The point of the matter was, beautiful young little boy, I don't know, he might have been five, in the back seat. And I looked at her. You could tell she was distraught. You could tell she was upset inside. She wasn't crying, but you could just tell. And I thought, God, you know what? You would have had us to raise $2,000. 
you would have had people to work hard to get all that stuff together if the destiny and time for that young little girl, if it was just for her. If it wouldn't have been for nobody else, the God in heaven looked down on the one and said, she's so precious, I love her so much. I'll have a bunch of Christians to work and raise money just so when she rides through that line that the Holy Spirit can touch her life. How many of you, you believe that? Just for the one. There's somebody out there, listen, there's somebody out there that is just the one. And I am asking you, during, during this time, to find the one that you can love on. The one you can pick up the phone and call. The one you can text. See, just because they know the Lord Jesus Christ is their Savior does not mean that they're not hurting. We all need each other. Let me close with this. We all need each other. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, purple, green, yellow. I don't know what color you are. We all need each other. Amen. To care for each other. I never, I'm going to preach a sermon down the road a little bit on honor. I have never in all of my life seen the dishonor in our country. I have never seen it the way they're treating police officers in my life. And God is very clear in this word. If you will honor, I will honor you. And if you dishonor, I will dishonor you. Let's love on each other. Let's be kind to each other. Let's watch what we put on multimedia. Come, come, come. If somebody, if I don't close now, I'm going to start preaching. I'm going to go down a road and y'all might not get out to four. Come on. Let's honor each other and respect each other. We got a young man here from the military. We got a gentleman that, that's watching, watching our security from the police department. We are, we are, we got military men that, that uh, veterans here this morning. We are too. Well, Pastor, you just don't, I don't care. We are too. The Bible tells me we're to honor those men. We're to honor the men that were veterans, that, that were fought and was in war before us. And we're to honor the young. And we're to honor the... We're, I don't know how I got off on this, but church, God is looking for Christians. How in God's heaven can we expect the world to show any honor when we got Christians that are dishonoring people? I knew I wasn't going to get too many claps on that one. Okay, the last point. During the shaking, who will you walk hand in hand with? You'll walk with Jesus, but somebody else needs you to take them by the hand, right? Unshakable faith in time of a shaking time. God will see us through, and God has the whole world in his hand. Amen? Amen? We're going to stand strong in the midst of adversity because God's going to see us through. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I almost did it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I felt the presence of the Lord here. How about you? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you this morning, for you are a good, good father. Lord, I am amazed, I'm amazed how you 
have taken care of your children during this time. And God, we can be steadfast, unmovable, walking unshakable with our faith in you. And if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, uh, you know what? I have just been like playing around with my life. And I am, I, I just want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior this morning. Maybe you're a backslider and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've been playing with your life and say, Pastor, I'm, I'm ready. Today is the day of salvation and tomorrow's not promised. And I want, I want a heart change. I don't want to walk to the altar and just say a prayer. I want a heart change. If you're here and like that, with every head bowed, never eye closed, just quickly, quickly slip your hand up and take it back down. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As they play in the background and sing, I want us all to say this prayer together. And if you say this prayer, meaning it down in your heart, then you are a born-again Christian. We don't have to have nothing fancy, but if you say this prayer, but it's got to be from your heart, you are forgiven and ready for heaven. I want all of us to join together and pray. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I admit that I am a sinner. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess all of my sins to you today. Forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. And cleanse me in Jesus' name. I will live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Praise God. Let's sing this last song and you are dismissed. Let's sing this before we leave. Amen. Oh, time Don't forget to stay outside if you want to keep some food with you, amen.